Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today I am talking once again about the Lethal Avatar The Last Airbender collection. I already did my swatch and review video. I pushed really hard to get that out before the launch. Now I've been taking my time with this second video. So the first video was a lot of close-ups, swatches, prices, that type of thing, the real info heavy stuff. And today I'm going to show you a couple of looks so you can see a few of these products in action. And I'm also going to show you a whole bunch of palette comparisons. My very stained swatch arm and I have been working hard on a whole lot of palette comparisons. Most of the ones that were requested either here or on Instagram, I was able to include. I was missing a couple of the requested palettes and then I added in a few of my own comparisons. So we have a lot of fun stuff to get to in this video. I'm gonna start with a couple of eye looks. I did one look each with the Air and Earth palettes. These are my two favorites, so they were just the ones that I was most excited to film tutorials with. You'll also get to see the White Lotus pressed highlighter in action in this video too, and then we'll get to a whole lot of swatches. So let's jump into those eye looks first. First up is a look with the Air palette. This is definitely one of my favorite looks that I've done recently. It's just a little bit neutral. It's a little bit purple. There's lots of shifty shimmer. I've got some warm toasty browns in there, a little bit of depth on the outer corner, a little bit of like a faux smoky liner. Of course, shimmery, shimmery purple and silver. These are a bunch of my favorite things. So I just used this shade Sky Bison first all in the crease area and I blended that up and out. This is not a super precise look, which honestly is my preference. I do not thrive on precision eye looks. So I'm just using that same brush and kind of smushing it to be flatter and then smudging that along the lower lash line too. Then I'm using this deeper matte brown shade called Glider and with a smaller little blending brush, I'm putting that on the very outer part of my lid and blending that a little bit into the crease as well, but I'm really concentrating the majority of that depth on the very, very outer part of the eye and the very outer part of the crease. Just going back and forth between my original crease brush and this one that I'm using to actually apply that darker color. I didn't use any more of that Sky Bison shade. I'm just sort of blending with that brush to get everything nice and smoothed out. Now I'm using this super shimmery purple shade. With my fingertip, I'm just applying that all over the rest of my lid with a little patting motion. This shimmery shade has so much impact on its own, but this applied over a black or a white base really lets this duochrome purple shade shine pun fully intended. Then I just went back with a pencil brush into that glider shade and I'm smudging that along the lash line on the very outer part. This gives a bit of a faux smoky liner look without actually having to use an eyeliner, which I am kind of terrible at. So I just added a little definition to the lash line and now I'm using this silvery, also kind of duochrome shade, with my pinky to the very, very inner part of my lid. I'm not putting it around the inner corner. I'm just putting it very, very close to the inner corner on the actual lid and blending that up into the purple shade. Then I curled my lashes, added a little bit of mascara, and that's my finished look. This is super simple, but a really beautiful, wearable, impactful, shimmery eye look. If I wanted to up the ante on this just a little bit, I would add maybe a little pop of a shimmery purple liner in that lower water line, or you could definitely add some more dramatic liner, maybe a little half lash. This is just such an easy wearable look. It's definitely one of my favorites that I've done in a long time. 
Now we're going to go over to something that's a little bit more expressive, a little bit more colorful using the Earth palette. I'm prepping my lids in the same way with my favorite eye primer, the Ulta Matte Eye Primer. And then I'm going to start off with this really bright acid lime green. This one's called 575. And I'm using a big fluffy blending brush because I want this color to be really diffused and kind of blown out looking. I'm going to be adding and layering a lot of greens. So I don't need to be too precise. Not that I ever am. I feel like we've already established that on this channel. But I'm really just kind of smacking that color on to the crease area and blending up towards my brow bone because I want that color to really be peeking up behind this more intense look that I'm going to start building. Next, I'm using the deeper, more chartreuse lime green and with a small little precision blending brush, I'm adding that to the outer part of my crease and starting to add some depth there. I am gonna be mapping out a little spotlight eye, but I wanted this deeper shade to help me transition from that lighter acid lime green down to the deeper greens that I'm gonna start applying next. So I'm gonna use a very flat, more of a packing brush type of thing. This one's also from Singe Beauty. I'll try to remember to list which brushes I used in the description box. So I'm using this little flat brush and the very deep matte green, and I'm starting to map out that spotlight look on the eye by adding some depth to the inner and outer parts of the lid only. Then I'm going back with my crease area shades in a bit of a combo and just diffusing the edges and I'm using that exact same shadow combo along the lower lash line as well just to add some balance to this look. Next I'm going to use this metallic shade. This is such a cool shimmer shade. It's called Metal Bending and just using my fingertip I'm tapping that right in the center where I left blank space on my eyelids. This is really gonna make the look come together. It looks so dynamic, contrasted with this deeper matte green. Then I just went back in with a little bit of my darker matte color to deepen up the very outer corners and just sort of pat that into that shimmer shade so that we get a nice smooth transition between the two. And lastly, I decided to add this green to pink duochrome on the lower lash line. The pop of that pinky shift on the lids really ties in with the shifty pink highlighter that I'm going to be wearing today. This is the White Lotus highlighter and I'm using the small fluff brush from ColourPop to apply this. This has such an impact on me that I barely need to apply any of this to the tops of my cheekbones to really get that shifty pink shimmer to show up. This would also be a nice blush topper. This is another look that I think would be beautiful with some green metallic liner in that lower waterline. And definitely this more bold look would support a little bit of a lash for me as well. I was truly wearing these all day throughout my day though. So I was trying to keep it a little bit more paired back just because that's how I'm the most comfortable and that's how I prefer to wear my makeup day to day. So that's just what I'm rocking with, but you could definitely spice this up with some liner and lashes as well if that's more your speed. I love the way this turned out. I can't decide between the Air and Earth palette which one is my favorite, but of the collection, these are my two most reached for and just preferred color scheme palettes, but so far I've really enjoyed everything. Now we're going to do a couple of comparisons because comparison time is my favorite time and we can't do comparisons without reaching first for the ColourPop Avatar The Last Airbender palette. As you can see, there are some very similar shades in here but they definitely are not performing the same. Now, 
some people prefer a softer, lighter, more buildable type of formula, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think this ColourPop one is just a little bit more hit and miss for me formula-wise, whereas it's pretty obvious that the Lethal Shadows are a lot more impactful. They have a lot more intense pigmentation. And that's not the right thing for everybody. It is my personal preference though. I also really wanted to do a full scale comparison with the ColourPop Legend of Korra palette. These are the only comparisons where I didn't do a one-to-one -one using the individual nine pan palettes from the Lethal Collection. I just wanted to see if you could get the same types of colors if you had all of the Avatar collections. And I think, you know, this one's not quite as similar as the original Avatar palette from ColourPop, but you could get some pretty similar looks in my opinion. Now, here is the one and only dedicated air palette comparison that I wanted to do. I could not stop comparing these in my mind. I think it's that yellow, red, purple with a little sky blue with a bunch of neutrals that just stuck in my brain. Clearly these are not that similar. I think they're more related. I think these would be great companion palettes. Not a whole lot of one-to-one -one dupable type shades, but I think the color story just has the same feeling. So I can see these working really nicely together. Next, we're going to do some Earth palette comparisons. The Gemini palette from Melt was one of the requests. And again, I don't really think there's much one-to-one -one dupage going on here. Maybe the brown matte and maybe that third shade, the metallic green one. But otherwise, the overall tones, undertones, vibes are not very similar. Again, I think these are better as companion palettes than dupes. And the Druid palette is another one that I cooked up. This is one of my all-time favorite palettes. And, you know, maybe more similarities here for me than the Gemini palette, but not a whole ton of dupes. I would say maybe three out of nine are what I would consider to be incredibly similar. And that's about as close as we're going to get as far as the Earth palette comparisons. The last one comes from within the Lethal family. This is the Evergreen palette. And it was that really acid green shade that made me pull this one out. Evergreen has a lot more variety as far as undertones and also just a variety of colors because there are some purples and some more yellowy shades in Evergreen. Next up, let's talk about the fire palette comparisons. The whatever palette came to mind immediately for me because I thought those deep burgundy red shades would be really similar, which they are. However, the whatever palette is definitely lacking the impact of that fourth shade, that really, really bright, intense matte red. The whatever palette is just more of a soft kind of corally red in comparison. A requested palette, highly requested comparison, is the Red Dragon palette. This was a Odin's Eye collaboration from a couple of years ago now. And while the one-to-one -one comparisons aren't all exactly straight up dupes, I think that you could get a lot of the same eye looks from these. And the theming's very similar. So if you already have Red Dragon, you may be comfortable just sticking with that one and passing on the Lethal Fire Palette. This was requested, I believe, on my Instagram page, the Nomad Hudson Valley Palette, which is one of my absolute favorites. I do think these are quite similar as well. And just side note, Nomad has stated that they are not going to restock this Hudson Valley palette once it sells out. So if it's still available, I highly recommend picking one up if you can because it's one of my all-time favorite Nomad palettes. Switching gears again, we're going to move over to the Lethal Water palette. 
the first comparison that I thought of was this Blue Moon palette, mostly because of that third matte shade, that kind of periwinkle soft blue. And those are pretty similar. Otherwise, Blue Moon is just way more primary blue forward, whereas I think the Lethal Water palette is quite a bit more dynamic. Another Odin's Eye comparison is the Christmas Eve palette. This is one of their cult favorite palettes. And again, I have some similar shades here and there, but these strike me more as companion palettes. I think you would have a hard time straight up creating several different eye looks. But, you know, again, a handful of shades here, probably three-ish out of the nine are what I would consider to be very similar. Otherwise, it's just similar vibes. Another palette that I feel will not be available for much longer, it may already be sold out by the time this video actually gets posted. This is the BH Cosmetics Passion in Paris palette, and I did find it still for sale. I think it was on the Beauty Bay website. I'm definitely going to link it in the description box for you if it's still out there because this is another one that I highly recommend you snag if you can. It's a really, really nice little palette and very affordable. And this one I know is long gone. It's one of the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop palettes. The blue one is called Bubblegum. And this is my final comparison. I was surprised that I didn't have a whole lot of incredibly similar blue palettes. I was definitely expecting to find more straight up dupes, but then again, I'm not somebody with a ton of blue palettes on hand, so maybe I'm the problem. I haven't filmed any looks with the fire and water palettes. I think it might be kind of fun to either combine these into a super contrast look or maybe use the two of these in a palette bingo or something. Just I think that would be really challenging and it could be it could be fun. It could go a little crazy. Could be a good time. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more looks with any of these palettes, particularly if you want to see fire and water in action. I have not used the eyeliners on my eyes. I'm not a big liquid eyeliner gal, but you know, it's fun to push out of the box. Maybe this is a good opportunity to do that too. I don't know. Let me know what you want to see. If you want to see any more looks with these, if you're good and it's just time for us to move on to other things, that's fine too. You know, I want to know what will be most fun and helpful for you. Even if you didn't order this collection, don't have plans on picking anything up. I hope that it was just at least fun hanging out here with me. Maybe you found some good alternatives from the comparisons. I would love to hear what you think. Which look was your favorite? Do you want to see more looks? I always love to know what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down now. I got a comment on one of my videos, one of my review videos that was like, it was really smart for you to put the tutorial first because I will just skip this and click out of your video. I was like, damn, okay. I mean, I guess I appreciate the feedback, <laughs> you know, probably not how I would have phrased it, but got to respect the honesty, I suppose. <laughs> it really is fine. It's fine. Of all the things that have been said to me, that's nowhere near the worst. <laughs> Honestly, I swear, if the person who commented that is watching this, I promise it's fine. Although I doubt you made it to the blue person. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> I think I've been filming for too long because I'm kind of like, cuckoo bananas. Oh my gosh. If it's not one thing, it's another. The highlighter is so pretty. It's just not like my favorite, personal favorite type of thing. But this blush, I'm wearing the Huda blush filter. I mix two shades together. I love this blush. <laughs> I kind of knew I was going to, but confirmed. Video evidence. I've been wearing this lip combo for hours and it still looks really good. It's the e.l.f. O Face Lipstick in Drive with a little bit of the Sigma Lip Oil in All Heart on top. I thought the lip oil might break up the lipstick, but it honestly looks so good.
I've been wearing this for like two hours and it still looks good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's a cute little combo. That was aggressive. What am I trying to say? Ooh, I'm sweating. I really had a good... All right, we did it. Hurrah. We did great. We just did great. All right. Thanks for hanging out here with me. You know, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm always happy to see your cute, sweet little baby face here. You want to know why? It's a secret. Actually, it's not. It's not a secret. It's because I love your face. Okay, bye.